Welcome to another Webinar Wednesday. Uh, my name is Brandon Lilly, and today I am joined by none other than Matt Hertzfeld, our uh, Head of Customer Experience here at Marketing 360. Matt, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Brandon. Thanks for having me here today. Excellent. Uh, really glad to have you here on the webinar. We want to talk about a couple of different things, but specifically, I want to talk to you about how you can increase sales and customer retention through great customer service. I figure you are absolutely the best person to talk to about this, and I think you can bring a lot of value to this webinar today. Uh, so real quick, some housekeeping items. You can uh, follow us on YouTube and Facebook. We are live on both of those channels. Uh, and additionally, you can follow along with this presentation at m360.us slash 78BD. Uh, after the webinar, this uh, slide will be live. You can access it there as well, and the link will be in the description of the video. So, Matt, a couple of questions that people are going to be asking, especially new business owners or maybe even some business owners that are trying to get started and trying to uh, really establish a great legacy of customer service. You know, they're going to they're going to ask, where do I start? Uh, what makes for great customer service? And and kind of the big question is, why does the customer experience really matter? If they're, if they're receiving the service that they paid for, or they're receiving the product that they bought, what is the benefit for a, uh, an even better you know, customer experience? So I'm sure you've got a little bit to add already. I'd love to hear your take on uh, why customer experience matters. Sure. Uh, great question to start off. I think customer service, for especially for a, a startup or a small business owner, um, Customer service is an element of your business that <clears throat> really should start off like like any other part of your business. Meaning, you should it should be uh, you should have an objective and you should be able to define your identity and who you want to be and what kind of service you want to be able to provide. Everything really kind of flows off of that. Um, just like anything else, you don't want to be wandering around and try to figure things out on the fly. It's good to sit down, set a goal, what you want to be known for from a customer service standpoint. And and then, uh, you know, really keep track of that, how you're performing along those, uh, along those lines along the way. Um, as far as the role of customer service in a business, you know, simply put, you're going to go out there and you're going to work really, really hard to first let people know that you're, that you're available, uh, that you exist. You're going to work really, really hard to get that first customer and then each subsequent customer after that. You're going to work really, really hard to be extremely good at your craft or the service that you're providing. You're going to work hard to provide, um, you know, if you're a contractor, a plumber, or you're an e-com uh, business, you're going to work really hard to provide the service that the client expects. And we can't kid ourselves. Clients expect excellent customer service no matter where they go. It's a, they, they think of it as the standard, right? And so you want to, um, if you're going to put all that work in to get the customer, provide great service, it makes sense then to put in a great amount of effort to do the follow-up and provide good customer service. It's going to make it easier for you to gain that next customer down the road. Customer service. You can't just have kind of the bare minimums. They they already are expecting that you're going to say hi and you're going to be friendly and you're going to welcome them. Uh, but going above and beyond that really makes the difference and it helps set you apart from any of your competitors in that space. Absolutely. Um, and interesting enough, it's, it's one of those things that I think a lot of small business owners, especially when they're starting out, uh, take for granted. Uh, simple things like answering the phone, right? Um, if you're not used to doing that or you've been, uh, let's say, uh, a contractor or a, an electrician and you've been responsible just for responding to clients out in the field, now all of a sudden you find yourself running your own business. You've taken that risk, put yourself out there. Now you are the marketing department and you are the sales department for your own business, right? Now your phone's ringing and you'd be surprised or maybe not how many of the clients that we work with that that's something they take for granted the first time their phone rings and they answer the phone with hello as if it's then on the on the client on the other end to figure out did I call the right place or is this Joe's plumbing or etc have a game plan know what you're gonna do put some thought into it when you when that phone rings you need to be ready and I always tell clients act as though that's the last time that phone is gonna ring and you need that client right it'll change the way you answer the phone that's a great, great idea. Uh, and that actually can move us into our next slide here. You know, the first thing you want to do is it, with the make it easy is build trust. 
you know, you, like you said, you've already spent a lot of energy and effort, money and time in driving people probably to your website or uh, through networking events, you know, business cards, things like that. Uh, you've spent a lot of time and energy there. So you have to make sure that you are building trust. There's generally speaking going to be a lot of a competition in your area, whether you're a local service or you're selling, uh, you know, e-commerce, you're selling a widget or something like that. You're generally speaking, you're not going to be the only person doing that. So a great way to differentiate yourself from the very beginning is by building trust. And it really starts with the very first interaction. That interaction can be on your first call. It can be the first email. It can be their first website visit. Uh, but we've written down the five B's for, uh, for building great customer service. And uh, I'd love for you to walk us through those. Yeah, we try to keep it simple. Everything I learned from some really great mentors and business owners uh, a long time ago, keep things simple uh, and be energetic, right? Uh, and so everything that I do, even from a customer service standpoint here at Marketing 360, we try to really break everything down just to its most basic fundamental level and, and build from there. As it relates to this, you know, number one, you've got to be visible. We talk about that a lot from the marketing aspect. If they don't know you exist, they can't become your clients. They're simply not going to call. So number one, just be visible. Uh, when people need your services, be visible, be be there. Number two, be available. Um, we talk to clients often that spend the money and invest the money in running ads so that they get the phone to ring and then they don't have somebody there to answer the phone. If, if I'm calling and you're not available, you've missed that opportunity. It's essentially, it, it could turn into a wasted ad dollar. So simply put, be visible, be, be there when they need you and then be available. Uh, be easy to contact. Um, just like with the websites that we build in the marketing, it's about convertibility and, and, and making it simple for people to contact you. Uh, you know, if it takes multiple steps and if it becomes work for a customer to be able to contact you when they need you, they're gone, right? Nobody likes additional work. And if I have to click through a number of things and I have to fill out a number of forms just to get in contact with you, you're going to lose me as a client. Right. People are savvy today and they want things quick and easy. Make it simple for them to contact you. Uh, be responsive when you've got uh, if you have people filling out forms uh, online, be responsive to that. The quicker that you can get back to those, the better it is for your business. And it shows clients that you care about um, their inquiry. Right. And you care about that's the first experience that they're going to have with you. If it takes you a day, two days for you to get back to me, that's setting the tone for. That's the only thing that I know as a uh, prospective client, that it took you X amount of time to get back to me. So be responsive. Lastly, it seems simple. A lot of these things should seem simple once we start talking about them. Uh, but be friendly. Uh, again, this is the first experience that people are going to have and the first uh, piece of information they're going to use to choosing you or your competition. As you mentioned, you made a great point. It doesn't matter what field you're in. You're competing. <laughs> um, oftentimes we think that we're the best at what we do, and that might be the case, but we're still competing every single day. And that first interaction that, uh, that a client can have with you, be energetic and give them the impression that you are excited to hear from them and that you are anxious to become uh, their provider for whatever service that they're looking for. Absolutely a great example. Uh, Amazon Prime, you know. You could probably go down the street and you could buy something and you could you could go into the store and, and order it there or, you know, you can have it shipped to your house. Well, the convenience of that is, you know, I, I know Amazon Prime is only going to take two days. So I'm looking for that immediate response. And in today's day and age, that immediate interaction, that immediate response is what people are really looking for. If I have a question about your product, I, I probably want to buy it. At least I'm in research mode. So if I email you the question, I call you the question, live chat is fantastic. I use that all the time. Any chance I have to use live chat with something, done. You know, so ask the question, I get an immediate response and I can make my decision right then. If I'm calling for a service, you know, plumbing, roofing, landscaping, anything, any kind of service, you know, I'm thinking about it right then. I'm in buying mode right then. This isn't a billboard where hopefully I see it right when I wanna make a decision. I'm actively searching for your website or, you know, to have your business card or something. I'm in the mood to buy. So you're exactly right. The more responsive you are, the more sales you're going to get. Right. Well, I think it's important to, oftentimes we, um, we have this idea the they're in buying mode. We think of that as the direct correlation between they're buying my product or buying my service. I think of it as that first interaction 
they're in buying mode, I'm, I'm, my first step is to get them to buy into me as a, as a potential, um, you know, provider for whatever they're looking for. Every contact that I can have, and even if it's somebody that got a hold of me by, by accident, that's an opportunity for me, especially as a new business owner or a small business owner, to create an impression with this person that, uh, that they may carry with them go, you know what, I got the wrong number for this guy, but this guy was fantastic, right? Um, make an impression. You never know when that person is going to run off and, and run into, you know, maybe cocktail or happy hour with a neighbor who happens to need an electrician. They go, you know what, I actually talked to this person the other day. You should give them a call, right? Every opportunity that you have to interact with somebody is an opportunity to grow your business. And that is a perfect segue into our next slide. Uh, again, we're trying to make it easy. So this one is build relationships. And I think you've already touched on this a little bit. You know, you it, it make it easy for clients to remain your clients, or like you just said, make it easy for them to even become your clients. People don't always work with people that they like. You now it's, it's easy to like someone and think that they're a good human being. People want to work with competent people that they like. So it's not always just about being friendly and being easygoing and easy to talk to. It's also about being clear and confident, concise, and being able to assure somebody that we've only been talking for five minutes, but I know for a fact I can solve your problem and here's why. Mm -hmm. you know, so we've got four tips to, uh, to keep clients coming back and help build that relationship. And I'd love for you to go through those. Yeah, it starts, uh, again, keeping it simple, uh, always provide value. No matter what you're doing for a client, their time is valuable. Your time is valuable. Always provide value. Um, and so, number one, you want to listen to their needs and not just their wants. So, uh, clients, so if you just ask the right questions and, and sit back and listen, as opposed to constantly trying to be into sell mode or you know, we the I hate to use the analogy, but like the, the high pressure car sales that always t tends to come to mind for people. And for professional salespeople, that's not the case. Professional salespeople are professionals just for that reason, because they've taken the time um, to really work on the craft and hone that. And a big part of that is the listening, right? So listen to your client, understand what it is and, and find a way that you can help them via your platform or your service or, or your product. Um, the next one there, win the client, not the situation. We push that here at Marketing 360. The idea behind that is it, it's easy to get caught up and it can be emotional sometimes when you've put in a lot of work for your client. Uh, but if you want to think about keeping this client long term, it's about winning the client, winning the heart of that client, right? I might be able to push back on you and say it, it might be easy for me to say, we're not refunding this or we're not refunding that or customer, you were wrong here, you were wrong here. And I win that individual situation, right? And it feels like a, a, a victory in the moment, but nothing that we do as business owners or entrepreneurs happens in a vacuum. Everything that we do in every interaction that we have has a ripple effect and we have to be mindful of that. If I can win the client now by giving a little bit now and taking care of them in, a, in my attempt to win over that client every time, that's all going to come back to your business. Uh, and so, you know, I repeat that to myself all the time, win the client, not the situation, right? Um, and the next one, think big, big picture and long term. That plays into that. That's an extension of that. Um, doing, doing things for the client right now that seem like you're giving a lot right now, but if it's going to win the client long term, we get caught a lot into thinking of the, the value of this client or this, this transaction right now. But if you win the client, they're going to come back to you and they're going to spend, they might, it might be a, you know, a hundred dollar transaction now, but over next month and next month and next month. And then all the clients that they refer because I've won this client over, we have to think long-term in the overall value of each client and not just in a singular situation. Um, and know your clients. This really comes down to it. Everybody, there's always somebody offering a similar service or a similar product to what you offer. Uh, and oftentimes there, there's companies that are going to offer it at a lower price. Clients have a lot of choices. Customers have a lot of choices. If it comes down to one company or one service might be a little bit more expensive, but I know every time that I call them, they, they're going to call me by name. They're going to remember the little things and they're going to treat me like a valued customer. I'll spend the extra money every time. Right. And so it's taking the opportunity to ask questions, get to know your, your clients and what makes them tick. Uh, a friend of mine told me a long time ago, interested is very interesting. Right. 
So you take an interest in people and learn about them and you ultimately become the most interesting person they'll talk to all day long. I had a question come in on YouTube uh, and we're free to take questions anytime you have them. Just uh, chat them out and we'll get to them as quick as we can. Uh, we're not actually talking about pay-per-click right now, but we've got plenty of videos and other webinars uh, related to that. However, pay-per-click does really kind of tie into this, right? Um, and actually while we're talking about it, on average, it costs about five times more to attract a new client than it does to retain a current client. So with a, uh, with a good multi-lead generation marketing plan, obviously you're, you're spending money on, on bringing new people in and bringing new customers to your business and, and getting this first touch with them, right? So there's a cost associated with that. What we want to talk about today is not necessarily how to reduce the cost of a pay-per-click or, or strategies related to that, but more specifically, what do you do when you have that first interaction with them? So, you know, we've already talked about uh, how we can build trust, building relationships, and uh, Matt, you've already touched on this a little bit, but I want to talk about uh, how you can make it easy to kind of maintain those relationships. Uh, so if we move to the next slide, we, we talk about this a lot because there's so much value in a CRM. And uh, it's a, a customer relationship manager or a management system. This makes it easy to where you don't always have to keep everything in the back of your mind, right? And maybe when you've uh, uh, got a couple of clients, you can do that. But as you grow, you still want to be able to maintain this ability to communicate with every client as if they're your only client. Mm -hmm. And you also talked about how there's always going to be another business or another competitor trying to steal your customers away. They already know. You've already done all the hard work of selling them. They now know that they need this service or they love this product. They know it. You did all the hard work and you spent all your money on it. So it's easier for another customer or another uh, competitor to steal them from you. It costs them less and it's a more highly educated customer. So with a CRM, this gives you the ability to build some automation and build some, uh, some tools around your ability to communicate and, uh, and relate to the client. Uh, essentially, it's software that organizes your clients and leads as well as all your tasks, your data, and it helps uh, record anything associated with them. So we've used examples in the past about how this can help you create a better sales process. Uh, it can, if you have a sales team, then this can help to uh, alleviate some of the time spent with them trying to remember their next step or remember what they had to do next, you know, things like that. And it also allows you to build automation into your, your sales funnel. Uh, Starbucks did a, uh, did a study or a report on the average uh, lifetime value of their customer. And they found that on average, if they can keep that customer coming back, the lifetime value of, of a Starbucks customer is over $11,000, which is just an incredible amount. When you think about how much Starbucks spends on marketing and advertising and the, their locations and training their personnel and their employees, you realize that losing one customer can cost them 11 grand over the, the course of their lifetime. So utilizing a CRM is a great way to be able to uh, build some lifetime value with your customers and set some automations in place, automated emails, you know, automated ticklers to you and your sales team, notes on what your next steps are so that you don't lose customers after the first interaction or that first sale. This is a fantastic way to drive some lifetime value there. And Matt, I know you've got a bunch of experience with this also, and I'd really like to hear your take. Yeah, it's about being organized, right? You you start out and <clears throat> you start with one customer likely. You'll have that, that first customer is a, is a new business or maybe. Shortly. Uh, while he's coming back, you know, we're going to move on from CRM. We're going to start talking about another way to make is earning new business. Make it easy to earn new business. So you really want to just be able to turn your current customers to go back to that initial question that we had where we need to, uh, you know, using pay-per-click or other multi-channel marketing efforts to drive people in. You know, you've spent the money and the energy and all the effort, everything like that. So now... You want to turn these customers, you've earned those customers, turn them into your absolute best salesperson. You want to give them the opportunity to refer people. And, you, and the best way to do that is to make it easy. So we've got four tips on a great way to earn some referral business. And first tip, I found this to be incredibly valuable, is to provide some incentive for them to refer business to you. You know, 
obviously if we had to go out and we had to generate a brand new customer, there's a, a, a large cost associated with that, or there can be. So reducing that cost by having a current customer who's happy with you, bring the, another client to you, you've already saved money on that. So pass some of that opportunity along to the customer and br you know, bring them in, bring them into the sales cycle, give them the opportunity to maybe earn a discount on their next service or uh, provide them with a gift card. You know, especially if you've got a great relationship with your clients and they bring a, a new customer to you, if you happen to know their, you know, their favorite uh, place to get lunch, buy them lunch. $25 gift card is a great way to earn value and to earn that customer for life. Uh, second is acknowledge when they refer their friends. Send them a note, send them a letter. You know, hey, John, thanks so much. I really appreciate you sending Tom over here. You know, there's just so much value in that. I really appreciate that you trust me and that you trust me enough to refer some, uh, some of your friends. That's where you put that gift card and you send it out to them. That personal touch sets you apart from anybody else. Third is stay on their radar. Yeah, and this is a, a an opportunity for a couple of different things. The CRM, uh, building in some email automation so you can send them reminders and tips and updates. Uh, if there are seasonal updates or seasonality to your to your business, that's a great way to stay on their radar uh, and just kind of stay in front of them. Another opportunity is through retargeting and retargeting ads. Very low cost. You know, you've got traffic already coming to your website. You can filter out that audience and create audiences of converted leads, people that have contacted you. And then you can refresh the ads that they see so that it's relevant to them three months, six months, nine months down the road. So again, that top of mind awareness. Uh, and finally, and this seems to be the, the just the easiest one, ask. Ask for the referral business. You know, ask your customers, did you have a great experience? Did, you, uh, did we provide the service that you needed? And if so, please tell your friends. If you ask, you'll get the business. You know, if you ask, you'll get the referrals. And sometimes that can absolutely be missed as a part of your sales process. And sometimes it can even feel a little awkward. But if you're able to, uh, to kind of get over a little bit of that and understand and realize you provided great service and other people need to, realize, need to uh, be aware of it, need to be, you know, have your business placed in front of them, just ask for a referral. If they don't have anyone to refer, it's no, you know, it doesn't hurt you at all. But if they do, you've just earned yourself some great business and a new customer. Happy customers refer other customers. So let's uh, let's keep moving on. I think Matt is still coming back on board, but a part of being able to generate more customers through great customer service, aside from asking for uh, uh, referrals, is also asking for reviews. And we've talked about this in some previous webinars about the value of reviews uh, and the value of social proof. You know, not everybody wants to be the very first person to try a new business, a new product, or a new service. You know, they don't, some people are, and if you look at that bell curve, maybe twenty percent, ten to twenty percent, you know, they're willing to take the risk. They're willing to jump in and try something new. The majority, that you know, eighty percent or so, are not going to be people that are risk takers. Most people, human nature is to be risk averse. So a way that you can help to avoid some of that is by asking your current customers that have had a great experience with you because of course you provide great service is ask them to review you. And you can ask them to review you on a, a myriad of different platforms. One platform that we recommend is uh, top rated local. It's free, set up a free profile. It works as an aggregate. So it will pull your reviews from other uh, other places like Facebook and Google Plus uh, and give you a ranking or a score on there. So incredibly valuable. A consumer can actually go in and see what your reviews look like across multitude uh, a multitude of platforms without needing to go to each one and individually try to hunt them down. Additionally, you do have the opportunity to challenge negative or fake reviews. So unlike most other platforms out there, you do have the opportunity to challenge some if you find that a competitor or a, a disgruntled uh, individual that you may have had a run in with, if they're just leaving bad reviews because they're they're planning on trolling you, you know, you can challenge that review. They have to provide proof that they were an actual customer. And if they can't provide proof, that review is, is nix, it's gone. So highly recommend that. Uh, you should absolutely check out Top Rated Local. It's a great opportunity for you to build some of those reviews. Those reviews provide value. 
because a new customer can go, they can read them, they can see what other people are saying about you, and it alleviates some of that stress. It alleviates some of the, uh, the risk aversion. So they don't have to worry quite as much. And this goes back to our initial uh, tip, building trust. Another great way to build some trust is by utilizing these reviews. So let's talk about some, uh, some other ways that you can develop as a business owner. As Matt had mentioned earlier, you know, one of the uh, one of the biggest surprises for people as they move from an, em an employee to an employer is now you wear all the hats, right? You are doing everything. You're not just the service provider. You're not just the manufacturer of a, of a product. You're not just the person that's going out and providing the service that was purchased. You're the marketing, you know, you're the marketing team. You're the sales team. You're the customer service team. Uh, you're everything. So a lot of people need to find a way to move from being employee to employer. And what we've found, and what we've found is that uh, breaking this down into, we call, you know, we call it the five levels of leadership. This is actually inspired by John Maxwell, is how you can boost your customer service by working through this heuristic, this, this thought process, starting from level one and going to level five. And Matt, I think you're back with us, right? <laughs> you gotta love technology, Matt. If you can pull the mic up to you a little bit more, you're a little quiet this time around. Um, I, I know you need a second or two to uh, to process and think about this, but we're talking about the five levels of leadership and how you can use this heuristic to uh, be better at customer service and and work your way through these different customer levels. So uh, obviously, you start with position one and go through five, but I'd love for you to. Uh, uh, to talk a little bit about that and walk us through this pyramid. Yeah, uh, stepping right back into the fire here at the five levels <laughs> of leadership. Um, yeah, ultimately you start. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to belabor this and, and just read off a slide here. But you start out with anything you have. You have to understand what your position and your role is. And mm -hmm. for new business owners, um, or even as you mentioned, as you're making that transition. You have to you have to first define your what your position is and understand that and going from, you know, somebody who is just providing the service or maybe handling field calls or or processing orders. And now as a business owner, you wear all of those hats and have, having to figure out um, how to execute on all those different levels and stay organized. Best way to as you move through that and you're building relationships. Ultimately, people, you know, I, I look at, as I said before, you have to also find ways to provide value for every interaction that you have with your client. And that's where the relationships are going to come in. Uh, and building those relationships and providing value for clients is ultimately where they're going to give you that leeway and to be able to provide great service and deliver the results as you're looking at there. As you, as you are going through and executing and trying to deliver those results for clients, you're gonna come up on road bumps uh, and, and speed bumps and obstacles along the way. Things are not gonna go as planned. Uh, my wife and I have a saying at the house that when, when everything goes as planned, it makes for a really boring story. Um, and I always have this concept or this mindset of uh, sitting around a campfire with some friends and telling them how I had this great plan and everything went off perfectly be the most boring story ever and they'd all be rolling their eyes at me. I think of the same approach uh, or the same concept when I'm dealing with clients and, and advising them that look at opportunity when, when things come about or interactions with clients and things don't go as planned. You have a, uh, a situation with a client where your service didn't come off as expected or a product didn't, didn't get delivered on time, Any, anything like that. Those are opportunities. The easy thing that the client is going to expect is that you're just going to brush it off and move forward. But you can look at that as an opportunity to blow them out of the water with uh, exceeding the expectation in that moment when things have gone awry. It, they're not going to judge you on what actually happened. They're going to judge you on how you respond to it. And that's a great way to help grow the value and really define the brand for your business, which is going to... Now you're setting the tone and the standard for when you start to build your business and you start to build and bring in additional employees and additional team members. Now you've set the standard on how your company interacts and now you set the, the brand and really define that for 
what the team does moving forward. Way up to that position five of, of executing excellently. Uh, and I think a, a, I personally have had a great ex, uh, example of this. You know, I had to have a, uh, an HVAC technician come out to my house a couple of weeks ago. I, I don't know him from anybody. I just know he's an HVAC, uh, an HVAC technician. Mm -hmm. That's that level one. It's position. I know he's got a title. I hope he's educated. That's, that was my first experience with this company. Uh, he did an excellent job of communicating with me, of educating me, you know, teaching me some different things. Uh, I knew that it wasn't working and all I knew that I wanted it to work, you know? So he built that relationship and then was driving the results. That, that third position, that third level, he was able to explain to me exactly what needed to happen in order to achieve what was necessary. And then we ran into a bit of a hiccup. We found in, as he was digging around, this was going to cost more than what I had originally been quoted and what I originally thought. Now, obviously that's a problem as a consumer. You don't like to hear that. But he go, you know, he said, this isn't something that we would have known, you know, gave me a couple of different options. And then he went to level four almost immediately in my mind, he exceeded my expectations. He said, you know what, I'm already, I'm already under the house, you know, in the crawl space. I've already got this thing tore apart because that's just a part of the service I was already providing. So since I'm already under here and this part needs to be replaced, how about I just charge you for the part? I'm not going to charge anything for the labor. That ended up cutting my cost down by about 50%. And he went above and beyond. I had uh, meetings I had to attend to later on in that day. He asked me what my deadline was. I gave it to him and he met the deadline by accomplishing way more than I had originally, originally tasked him to do. So in my mind, that was a great example of proceeding through this, this pyramid of going from all I know is he is a technician to now, if I have another problem, I know exactly who I'm going to call. He's earned a customer just by going through the five levels of leadership. Like that, right? Um, Joel Spolsky, the uh, co-founder and CEO of Stack Overflow and Fog Creek and Trello, he approaches it like this and he says that they have, they have a high customer service rating for all their products and all their services. And it's, he said, it's not because all of our, we only have uh, happy customers that come to us. It's that there's an expectation on their part that's already preset. When a client comes to them, they, there's a certain level of customer service. They know and expect that they're going to get there. And so it's, it's the psychology of it, right? If, if a client is coming to you and all they know is that they've got a battle for every, every inch that they get and we could all, you know, without naming them by name, we know a number of companies that we could name out there that you, whenever you engage in a phone call or a conversation with them, there's a, there's a battle mentality, right? And when you can take that away because the client knows they're going to take care of me, whatever happens. If, if something comes up or goes awry, I trust that they're going to take care of me that you remove that from the situation and you build that as part of your brand and it makes it a lot easier for you as a business owner and a team to deal with customers going forward as well. And that actually brings up a really good point. You know, on occasion, the battle will arise and sometimes that can happen due to uh, a difference in, in understanding or knowledge of the situation, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I could have absolutely, in this scenario, I could have really fought and battled with the, this HVAC technician because I don't want to pay anymore. And I didn't know it was broke. It's not my fault it's broke. Mm -hmm. uh, and he could have fought me on this one. Instead, there was a, an education. Now, he did have a stern conversation with me of, sure, you can leave it like that, but I don't recommend it for X, Y, and Z reasons. Because he had built up a, a rapport with me and because we built this you know, a little bit of a relationship, he could have that conversation of, I appreciate where you're coming from, but you're wrong and here's the reasons. Right. You know, you can't, all, you can't immediately go, go from, this is what's broke, you're wrong, mm -hmm. if you haven't built a relationship with the customer. So if you've built a business that has a culture of associating themselves and, and ha with the customer, with the client, building upon empathy, working through the five levels of leadership. If you have that mindset, you can have those harder conversations and you can battle a little bit because there's mutual respect there. Doing the right thing, you should always be able to explain it, right? Um, if it, if you have to spin it and get into this, uh, get kind of crafty on how you're selling this to a client, it's likely because you're doing the wrong thing, 
right? And so if you treat customers as though they're really smart, intelligent people, because they are, and you talk to them like that, and you provide value at all points, and you're educating them along the way, uh, I believe overwhelmingly the, the majority of clients and customers that you're going to deal with are going to get it, and, and they're going to respond accordingly to that. Agree with you. So we've uh, we've compiled a couple of other resources. Uh, these are resources that we use uh, internally with uh, our chief executive officer. We've put a couple of YouTube videos together. We've got the the links are on the uh, the the drive here, the the slides. So you can watch a couple of other videos if you're interested in learning a little bit more. We've got some leadership advice and tips for small businesses how to turn leads into sales, uh, how to build customer loyalty. And we put all these videos together and they will be included in the description of this video later on. Uh, so if you wanna learn a little bit more, get a little more education on how you can turn your, your business from a service provider or a product provider to a company that offers exceptional customer service and builds relationships, then I highly encourage you to watch these videos. Again, uh, you can look at the presentation and follow through. You can see a couple of links in there. That's m360.us slash 78BD, m360.us slash 78BD. Again, that link will be in the video description here. But uh, Matt, do you have anything to add before we before we close out? Uh, no, the only thing I'd leave you with is, you know, don't overcomplicate customer service. Treat every situation. Uh, and if you think first, how would I want to be treated in this situation? The, the golden rule, right? Uh, if you think about that and approach every situation uh, with that mindset, uh, you'll build a fantastic brand for yourself. Excellent. And uh, for everybody else out there uh, from, you know, from Marketing 360 and from the perspective of, my, of myself and Matt, we would love to work with you. We love helping small businesses grow and, uh, and educating as much as we can. If you found value in this webinar, please leave us a comment, share it, like it. You know, and uh, if you've got any feedback on other topics that we can cover, we'd love to hear that also. You can also learn a little bit more about our marketing plans at marketing360.com slash start. There's no cost uh, to building your own marketing plan. You can look through that. We'll do our best to provide you with some analysis, some estimates on marketing costs, but you don't need to pay anything to actually get that started and, and, and to start the your education on a marketing plan. So marketing360.com slash start. We'd love to work with you. All right. Everybody, thank you very much for joining us. We will be back on Facebook and YouTube the same time next Wednesday. We do these webinars every Wednesday. Uh, we look forward to speaking with you again. Happy marketing.